The frequency's in use. Yeah, thank you. The frequency's in use. No, the frequency was in use. So running a net on 160 metres can be uh, a daunting task. To start a net, more complicated than running a net, but for to start a net, you'll need three or four other like-minded individuals that you'll have probably met on one of a QRZ forum, maybe. Probably you're being rude to each other, actually. What you need is a Fox operated system, particularly on 160 meter nets, because 160 meter nets is all about the dynamics, as if you're sitting around a bar, having a pint with your friends and you can all chip in. That's the important thing. And the other thing is, just like sitting in a bar table, everything you say has got to be like a private joke, right? Because if you actually had an intelligent conversation, people would come in and you'd have more break stations. So at the duly appointed time, one of you, you're probably all on the frequency. One of them just says, even in all, another clever thing you could say would be, who's here then? If there's someone already on the frequency, bit of a technique to get rid of them. So they're on the frequency and you just butt in. You go, hello, is the frequency in use? And the guy will go, yeah, frequency's in use. Just checking the frequency's clear. And the guy going, yeah, no, 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 the, the, the frequency's in use. OK, nothing heard. The frequency's in use. Yeah, on frequency, who's here for the Second World War net? The frequency's in use. Then your mate will come in. Oh, hi, John, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, just waiting for Jack. The frequency's in use. Yeah, thank you. The frequency's in use, you say. No, the frequency was in use. Basically, <laughs> you'll just completely drive him nuts. And then ideally, your other mates, even though the guy's 30 over S9, really strong, just pretend they can barely hear somebody. So I think he's clearing the frequency for us. Yes, that's... That's what I thought, Jack. No, the free was even in use. Works a treat. The guy just probably give his gear away and give up the hobby, to be honest. But who cares? It's your net, yeah? So let me give you an example of a typical sort of private joke QSO that happens on a 160 metre net. It's very exciting. Here we go. Uh, uh, John, did Martha have a good time? Uh, yeah, yeah, she she did. Well, well, well worth it, Jack. Yeah. Uh, you were... Uh, you treating her again, uh, John, are you? Well, well I, I, I had to, see? You know, I, I, sh I should get one for Mildred, you know. Ah, it's a good price, like. Hey, I heard about your new boat anchor, Jack. No, Fred, that's it's all wise. <laughs> his lottery ticket didn't come in, that's why. He doesn't need to win the lottery. Tell that to his tailor. Actually, 1939 is a, good, is a good frequency because it's the year that the Second World War started in the UK. So now some of your friends might be slightly forgetful about what frequency is and they'll be able to seed that in. And then you could call yourself the Second World War Net or something stupid like that. Now, because of the band police, the 160 metre boys have got used to the idea that a lot of people are listening to them now. So what we need to do is at least say our call sign. Ideally, stretch the rules as much as you can, but at least say your call sign. The tip I've discovered, you say your call sign, but completely and utterly unintelligibly. So if my call is G2EAN, the last thing I'm going to do is Golf 2 Echo Alpha November. No, I'm going to go G2EAN. People go, what the hell was that? The trick is, if you hear one of your members give out his call sign, immediately come in using your Vox, just cut it in like that, and then give yours as well. So if your call sign is um, G3RMN, by the way, I'm just making these up, right? Just an example to give you a good tip so you can get on 160. He doesn't say Golf 3 Radio Mike November. He goes G3 Armin. You see? So what you get then is uh, G2 AM, G3 AM. And that, what people get, you'd have to record it and play it back several thousand times or give it to the forensic department. And the good news is no one will ever get to know what your call sign is. It's still within the rules, you see. Now, if you have to give out your call sign, kind of a phonetic way, because somebody actually wants to know it because they were very strong and they came in, you know, break station or whatever, you need to invent a completely bizarre way of demonstrating your call sign because you're very clever, right? So if you're G4MOW, G4 Mike Oscar Whiskey, you want to create some crazy little saying and you go to the acronyms dictionary on Google, right? Acronym. And you put in your call sign, the end of your call sign. It will come up with things like MOW is like man of war, you know. So you can say... Yeah, yeah. What, what's your call? Yeah, yeah. G4 Man of War. Pardon? G4 Man of War, I just told you. Yeah, <laughs> just confuse them, all right? The last thing you want is a brake station coming in, annoying you. So the easy way to deal with that is just pretend you can't hear them. And this is how I would normally do it. 
He can't afford one, that's why. Break, break. Mike 3, Mike, Charlie X-Ray. Ha, <laughs> ha, Mike 3, Mike, Charlie X-Ray, break. I, I, I think I detected a break station. I'm very weak. Uh, John, can, can you hear him? Can't hear anybody here. All right, what about you, Patrick? Uh, hear anybody? And, and, and no, no, nothing, nothing in Ireland, no. Well, I must admit, I thought it was the uh, Continentals uh, probably breaking in. Uh, but we'll give them a shot, shall we? Uh, go ahead with a break. Who's, who's calling? Uh, hello. Uh, thanks for letting me in. This is Mike 3, Mike Charlie X-Ray. Uh, you're all very strong here. I'm in Solihull. Uh, my name is Callum. Uh, back to you from M3 Mike Charlie X-Ray. Yeah, all, all, all right, uh, uh, Callum. I, th I think you said M three something. Uh, yeah, uh, w anyone else copy him? Can't hear anybody here. Nothing in Ireland. No, you're not. You're not going out too well, mate. All right, I'm sorry about that. He's just above the noise. Bit of advice. Better antenna. All right. Um, John, what were you saying about the lottery? <laughs> and with that, most stations should go away. You see, which is handy. A little bit of a warning on power. In the UK, the power limit on 160 metres of a voice, in the main, from 1.85, I believe. I'd have to look it up right now, because I completely ignore this, yeah? I don't want to use 30 watts or something on top band. I mean, how am I going to be 30 over S9 into Ireland if I've got to run 30 watts? No, no, no. As a minimum, you run your 200 watt radio flat out. Ideally, you stick 50 watts into your linear amplifier and produce anywhere between 500 and 1,000. How else... Are you going to be so strong? You don't tell anybody because you never talk about science-based things on your net anyway. The last thing you want to do is actually talk about science. Right? This is all about complete mumbo-jumbo, just to confuse the planet. If you must go down the science route, then you could talk about maybe a Collins radio or your old father's CW straight key that you've renovated. I mean, that's OK. Or you could talk about a balanced feeder and then intimidate the listener by discussing how one of the the oak trees in the east lawn thinking get rid of but you've got your backup doublet on it for for 160 meters which you rarely use because ideally you need to drill a hole through the wall into the library and then through the staff quarters and finally get into your shack intimidation techniques work very well like that and just don't talk about science and the other thing is you never actually talk about other bands for a start off i mean you only need a single band radio if you're a top band guy uh, so if somebody, you know, accidentally mentions the fact they're on, you know, 40 metres playing FT8, blank them. Just blank them, OK? They, and then that will shock them into realising that they've made a catastrophic boo-boo by talking about HF and digital modes. Because the thing is, you can't admit <laughs> to actually having a computer on your desktop. If somebody wants something to write it down or, on, and everything, you just go, well, I'll just get my notepad. And you can hear the scribbles going on as they, as they give something down. I mean, the bottom line is, if you actually want to have a real conversation with someone uh, in your top band net, phone them. And it's the same with logbooks. You don't... Don't run a logbook. It's as easy as that. You have various scraps of paper and envelopes that you just sort of willy-nilly put um, call signs on, you know, and names and QTHs. And then you can even brag about the fact, oh, I found an envelope with this call sign and a name. Don't even know what it was for. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Then you come to the closed down etiquette because at the end of this net, somehow you've got to get out of it. And I think, from personal experience, you ought to shut down the net as fast as it started. One of the guys, after about an hour and a half, should just go, well, I'm off now. That's the trigger. Yeah, I'm out of here. See you next week, boys. Yeah, bye. 73. <coughs> just leave the shortwave listener and the other guys out there in the universe. Leave them in shock. You've just, like, been so brave. You've just dismantled the net. Just like that. Just gone. You were there, and now you're not. If you like my videos, give me a thumbs up. And if I've earned it, by all means, hit the subscribe button. You will need to hit the bell as well, because the YouTube algorithm can sometimes drop creators and viewers and separate them. Hitting the bell will make sure you'll get a notification that I've uploaded a new video, which I do about twice a week. Take care now and enjoy your radio. Bye-bye.